What's going on guys, Moonrose here, and today I bring you an undefeated Shine Greymon deck profile from my good friend and teammate here, Chris Pear. What's going on, Chris? Not much, Moonrose. Uh, yeah, Chris Pear here, also Chris P. Huegos, uh, did go undefeated at Saturday TCG Con with Shine Greymon, and here to show you kind of my deck list choices and card choices. Nice. Uh, we're going to always start off with the eggs. Uh, we did just go with the four red draw Coros. Honestly, there's always a debate between the red Koros and the yellow Koros. Both have their merits. I just enjoyed having the draw power. Uh, sometimes I would sacrifice a Geo Gray for that first check to help combo kill. Or um, sometimes you just need to draw that one extra card to get your piece. And it did its job. Uh, next up, we have four of the BT12 Searcher Agumon. Uh, this is also a public service announcement to remind people that the black Digi Evolution on a Koromon text box, that is an alternate dev Digi Evolution cost. So you can, if you want to, Digivolve on top of your red or yellow egg for a cost of one to memory choke your opponent. I did that a lot on Saturday, and two out of my three matches, my opponent was like, wait, you can do that? One of them also being a Shine Greymon mirror. Oh my god. Uh, we also have four of the BT13 Agumon. Helping turn our Marcus into Digimon for three, for free, instead of having to pay the one or make our five cost Marcus into a Digimon. Uh, I did play three Agu X, so that's why I also did Red Egg. Um, the draw power and search power for the X did help a lot. Again, it's also a dinosaur, so it allows me to Digivolve on my Geo Grays for the reduced cost. I know people that play Yellow Base play Kudamon, but I don't like having to pay three for my Geo Gray unless it's my choice. And then I paid two uh, EX4 Agumon, so I had a total of 13 rookies, because I just wanted to make sure I see a rookie. Uh, the draw inherit does help a little bit for digging, and sometimes the memory gain. For our champions, uh, four BT13 Geogramon. This Geogramon is just busted once again. I can Digivolve for two on top of my Agumon, or for three, so I can use that to manipulate the memory and help choke my opponent and be able to search your security and kind of see what cards you can grab out of it for your tamers or what cards are just stuck in your security so you know for your ratios. Gets you a lot of knowledge there. Uh, I did play three BT12 Geogramons, so that way I could play Marcus's for free from my hand. Um, honestly, I think I want to try to do this as four copies next time because I did try three copies of EX4 Geogray. Once again, Memory Gain and Draw Inherit. Uh, the draw inherit is a bit of a drawback sometimes if you're getting stuck against a Mirage Gao player. Um, I actually had that happen on my Sunday when I played, where the only Geograys I had were these ones, and it was a liability against Mirage Gao. For ultimates, for being able to play a Marcus for free, uh, Digivolving for three, uh, if you play the BT3, 13 Marcus that costs 5 and gains a memory, you're essentially digivolving for 2 while negging your opponent 3k. I, I only decided to play 2 BT12 Rise Greymon. Uh, it's a lot weaker than BT13 since it doesn't play a tamer. Uh, it can still evo for essentially 2 because you gain a memory back and obviously still has the same busted inherit of if something bad happens to your Marcus when it's swinging or gets killed, goes to your security. Uh, the reason why I did 2 BT12 Shine Greymons or Rise Greymons, was to play two BT9 Rise Greymon X Antibodies. Uh, this card actually came in very valuable a lot to help play more Tamers and essentially turn these BT12 Rise Greymons into your own pseudo BT13 Rise Greymons. The DP Neg came a lot, and honestly, most of the time, I just evoed on top of a Rise Grey. For our Megas, four Shine Greymons, the BT13 BT12 ones. Again, this is kind of helps with the combo killing of giving your Marcus security attack plus one, negging their security, negging a body, and really doing all those checks and damages to your opponent. Uh, I only played one copy of the BT13 one. Um, the blocker and the minus 6k when your tamer becomes suspended can be relevant and it helps become defensive. Uh, if there was a way that I could kind of play two copies of this, I would try to find a room. But the list is already pretty tight. Uh, I did do three Shine Greymon burst modes. 
I know some players like to play um, Ruin Mode, um, and it does help a lot in the mirror playing Ruin Mode, but I just decided that for this tournament, I'm just going to try to be aggressive as possible and kill my opponent. So instead, I just want to consistently find Burst Mode, as this card is busted for trashing a security when your tamer swings. Uh, it actually came up a lot, and in my top 8 match when we did top cut against Georgie playing Belphamon, I actually had two Shine Greymons out and was like, huh, I have a Marcus that could swing for two checks or three checks at 9k. But because he was playing Belphamon, it's like, huh, you're just going to negate that attack. I'm just going to double burst mode and then swing with the Marcus and guarantee two security get trashed. Nice. Uh, for Tamers, two BT12 Marcus, it's our busted Marcus. It helps us, you know, Digivolve for cheap and for free, essentially, when it swings. Um, always do note, with burst mode, you can replay your Marcuses, so you can kind of reuse this in case you have another stack you can keep evoing up of. And then we have four copies of BT13 Marcus, so that way we have eight Marcus total. Mem Setter, on play, you can suspend it to give your opponent's Digimon minus 3k and gain a memory, as long as, again, you have an Agumon or Greymon in its name in play. And this also comes clutch for helping remove bodies, helping gain more memory, especially after you burst, replaying this, swinging again, to essentially gain like one or two memory. And then option-wise, I just did two red bamboo since we're doing base red. That way, if we have, if we hatch our egg and don't have a rookie, we can play the boost to try to find a rookie or any of our pieces because they're all red cards except for the tamers. Can't wait for trainings in uh, BT14. Yeah. And then just one copy of Sunrise Buster. Uh, still a very powerful security bomb. Um, it, in conjunction with the BT13 Marcus, because that essentially works as two tamers. So if I have three tamers out, or even just two tamers out, and then I hit Sunrise Buster, play a BT13 Marcus, that's minus 12k with the Marcus, because that Marcus essentially counts as two. Really powerful. Yeah. Uh, that's my awesome. matchups. Yeah. Uh, my matchups for the tournament, I played against uh, round one Blue Flare. Uh, unfortunately for my opponent, the first three Blazing Memory boosts that he played only hit one Tamer, and when it finally hit that one Tamer, it was actually one of the two cards he could take, so he had to take it. Um, I played against a Black War Grey, which is honestly kind of our hardest matchup because of their Tamer deletion and sometimes their DP boosting. Uh, Black Tie and the Metal Grey, the Red Metal Grey X, raising the dp until the end of my turn can really make that dp reduction math very difficult um then i had two shine greymon mirrors um that one was kind of playing chicken with our geo grays so that's why helping digivolve for one if i went first i just go digivolve into agumon for one they'll either digivolve for one or pass turn digivolve to geo gray and then i could promote my agu and get my geo gray value uh in the finals i did play hunters um Unfortunately for him, he never had a rookie in his opening hand and just had to go turn one Watchmaker. And then I just blew through his security and there was no Tamers in there, so I was able to kind of clinch that matchup really fast. Um, once we had our top eight established, they did decide to do a top cut. But um, So we did our top cut, and then I faced Georgie because he was the eighth place person in this eighth place seed. So I had to play against Belfamon at uh, top eight, but that's honestly a pretty good matchup for us, as long as we make sure we don't attack the turn that they go into sleep mode to make them discard two cards, because they want to reduce their hand size. So if we keep them from reducing their hand size, they don't get their buff from their Belphamon. Uh, once we went to top four, we just all decided to split. Oh, wow. <laughs> but you did go undefeated, so that's I great. I did go undefeated in the Swiss round. Wow, that's, that's amazing, Chris. I'm very proud of you. Um known you for quite some time in the Digimon game. We've shared multiple teams together, and now we're here with Luxury, and you're kicking ass and doing all that good stuff. Um, yeah, especially with a deck that I really love and a character I love, I actually really enjoyed Shine Greymon from 1.5. I love Digimon Savers. I even you know, had a memory counter made of Shine Greymon for custom. And I just really love the deck. 
Yeah, I'm going to need that memory counter, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, shameless plug for uh, Chaotic Meatloaf or Trinity on Twitter, Chaotic Meatloaf, to find their Etsy store where they do custom mem markers. Yeah, seriously. Also, another shameless plug. Uh, shout out to Luxury Gaming, Metamats, and Dueling Guard for being our sponsors. Yes, I am very happy to have been picked up by Luxury Gaming. Yes, great team. We're going to see... We're already making waves. Well, guys, uh, I think, Chris, do you have anything else to say? Uh, shout outs to Georgie and Danny McNally. Did I pronounce that right? I hope I did. Uh, other fellow teammates, because they also made top eight with me. Uh, it was really nice to meet them in person, and I just really enjoyed being able to do in person tournaments. Awesome. Awesome. Well, guys, with that being said, thank you so much for watching the deck profile. And we will catch you guys next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below. Peace.